Uh, good morning. So I've been meaning to tell you a story for quite some time, but just haven't really had the opportunity. We've been traveling around doing our usual bits and pieces. But because we're now back in lockdown, we are concentrating on a couple of local ones, and today's story is a little bit local to us. So before we get there, before we talk about this story, we're trying to find our friend David. Um, David also acts as a bit of a local historian, so we'll um, try and find him very shortly. Trying to find David, hopefully around this corner. All being well. No, in that case, further up this hill. I feel like I've been walking up a hill for about half an hour. I've already introduced you, David. I've done all the introductions. Oh God, David's wearing a poppy. I am badly not wearing a poppy. So this is David. You may remember David from previous outputs. Well, I think you've been at least one, haven't you, David? At least one. At least one. So the question we're going to pose you today is how far does a railway station need to be to serve a town? Because we always see, when Rebecca and I are out, we always see stations that were built and they were maybe like one or two miles from the local village because of the way the, the railway had to carve its way through the landscape. And of course, they just plonked the station as close as they could. I could give you countless examples um, where, yeah, they're at least up to four miles away from its station to its town or a village. Today, we're doing a little bit more than that, and I'd say probably more than double four miles. Um, and we're currently walking along the south side of a town called Andover. Um, along what was the Ladies' Walk, which is a very old trackway, is that right, David? Part of the Mark Way. Part of the Mark Way. One of the many ancient trackways of Wessex. Yep. So the railway we're talking about in particular was built by a London and Southampton Railway Company. So I can probably give you an idea of roughly where that line went. So between 1839 and 1840, they eventually connected um, Winchester to uh, Basingstoke and they finally made the connection to London Southampton. Um, now, in between Winchester and Basingstoke, they had one intermittent station and that station served what presumably, on the face of it, would be Mitchell Town, because Mitchell Dever, oh, Mitchell Dever Village, which was two miles away. But they didn't call it Mitchell Dever. They called it Andover Road. Now, Andover, as a crow flies, is probably around about eight miles. And if you get in a car today and take that journey from Mitchell Dever to Andover, it'd probably take you about 20 minutes. That's in a car. So... <laughs> We assume the people of Andover, David, we assume they all petitioned and said, we want some of this railway action. We, they did, so this was the this was the closest railway, but being some seven, eight miles away from Andover, particularly in winter time, is a hell of a slog. So it took them 15 years to get their own station, the town's work around it, 15 years. So for 15 years, if they wanted to get on one of these newfangled railways, um, they really revolutionised things back in that era. Before, before the railways came, you had to move all your livestock by foot along the old drover's route. Yes, probably all canal, the there. canal wasn't suitable for hauling lots of sheep to market. The train, yep. yes. Perfect. Now that brings us on nicely to where we're about to arrive soon. Probably about 200 yards ahead of us is um, an old iron bridge. And we'll come to that in a short while when we get there. So David, I've just seen down there some very old raw iron fencing, like this. This was Tasker's. Tasker, so Tasker, Tasker's, Tasker's Randover. local, Tasker's Fowl local company, and we're presuming they built this beautiful piece of... Um, yes, this is the second second iron bridge they built in Andover. So the road below us now is Mitchell River Road. Now, this road, again, tells a story. This is the route to the railway. This is the route to the railway. So this is the final turnpike in Andover created through an act of parliament you look at the cutting here through the through the chalk there's a hell of a cutting through a big hillside yeah. heading out to Mitchell Dever 
So presumably, again, the the, the road was built then to, to, to reach a railway. The road so was built to reach a railway. This in was the 1849. Right, so they, they, they knew the road. 1849 was the Act of coming. Parliament. 1840, right. the, 1840, the road opened. Which obviously ties in perfectly which with the story ties of the in with the Warren, Warren Farm Station, which the farm compulsory purchase of the farm, Warren Farm, yeah. becomes under road, Andover Road Station. Presuming that this would be the steepness that they would have to use this road uh, pre the big cutting. So this was the gradient they had to come up in their horse and cart. And you said about the Royal Mail. The Royal Mail. Royal Mail. They had a sub, sub post office at Andover Road Station. Right, so they would have to yeah, get, get back and forth daily, we presume. And there's the mail, mail train from London. Right, and hence why they said, okay, well, in 1840, they levelled the road out. I said levelled it out, they just yeah, built the cutting. Dug through, dug through the hillside. Yeah. Every little step of today's journey, Dave is pointing something out. So there's a, a big estate there called Sheep Fair. And I've never even thought about it. all my life that I've lived in this area. And I've never even thought about Sheep Fair despite cycling through it as a kid every day on my way to school. And David just pointed out that. It was the year of the Sheep Fair. Obviously. Annual, annual fair held in Andover on the <laughs> common. So Mitchell River Road is now, it's still a road, but you won't see many cars like it. it just goes into a dead end. So I think it's probably um, very, very little used. There might be some house down here maybe. Pumping it come out dog walking or other nefarious activities. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, but I didn't know how to put that politely, David. <laughs> um, it's euphemistic as well. Yeah, exactly. But the, the, so what I was going to say is, well, let's just walk to the end of this road now. In the truest sense of this word as a vlog, um, I want to go and find a geocache because at the bottom of this road, there's a really ingenious geocache. We're just discussing that I love, I never really talked about doing the concept, like, so here is the old Mitchell River Road that we're walking on from the Iron Bridge that way. And this is an abandoned road. I don't do abandoned roads. I should do, we should do abandoned roads. <laughs> this is, I Friday love this. Time. You know, this has gone full circle from probably not a lot in 1800, 230, 220 years later. It's yeah, kind of gone full nature, circle. Nature is reclaiming it slowly. Yeah, fascinating. Right, 100 yards, we've got to cross a busy road, but literally the other side of the busy road that we're going to cross and hopefully not kill ourselves okay. is a very funky um, little hidden treasury type geocache. Right, so the geocache was a complete letdown. It's moved. I've just opened the geocache app. Used to be hanging from a tree and you used to have to undo this bolt and you have to wind it down. Fascinating, but it's gone. So I don't know why it's gone. Um, we're now in the middle of the A303 junction and we're just trying to work out. We're on the old Mitchell River Road. We're on the old Mitchell River Road somewhere, aren't we? And probably. We're on the old Mitchell River Road. It's in line. There, it, it then meets in what's now the modern A303. Yeah. Going towards London. So probably if we dug down about six feet or maybe a bit more than six you feet. Still see the oh, is that it? The roadway. Oh, that's it. So this was about as far east as we were going to go on today's journey towards Mitchelldever. And of course, although it was only around about two miles out of the original 10 miles, at least it gave us an idea of the route that you'd have had to take if you lived in Andover and you wanted to catch a train between 1840 and 1854. There was just one last question to ask. But everything else is a good success, you reckon, David? It's a lovely day for it. It's been a good, been a good little walk, good little explore on what was, what we believe to be one of the, probably one of the UK's furthest stations at the time from its town it was set to serve. Yeah. So see if you can beat, I'm going to say 10 miles. So Mitchell over 10 miles that way, as a crow flies, more, maybe more like seven or eight, but if you get a car now, 20 minute journey. Can you beat that? Do you know of another station which was built to serve the town? So you can't cheat, you can't use Bristol Parkway or Southampton Parkway because they're there to serve the car park. But can you beat 10 miles from Andover Road Station in Mitchell Dever to serve Andover for distance? I sound a bit worn out. That's a good challenge. There's a challenge. Right, we'll see you next week when we'll probably be back to another little vlog with um, me and Rebecca. Sorry if you've missed Rebecca. You'll have to go up with the glamorous <laughs> David instead today. <laughs> see you next time.